Hi, it's Ray. Welcome back to my channel and to another reading vlog. I am on spring break and I am so happy about it. I've been feeling so burnt out and I just feel like I've been reborn to have a couple of weeks to spend doing things I love like reading and making these videos. So this week I am on Mafia Island in Tanzania. We are hoping to do some diving. Tom has actually gone today to start his dive training course. I am in theory already qualified even though I did my dive training probably like seven years ago and have then done like one dive since then which was about six years ago so I definitely want a refresher course before I do any more diving but I'm gonna do that tomorrow because I just really really wanted to have this one day to completely relax and switch off and read and make videos and all the things that I have been craving doing so badly and feeling honestly so kind of down that I haven't managed to make the time to do alongside just my normal job and my health over the last month so that's what I've been doing today. For this week, my number one aim reading wise is to really get down my list of currently reading books. I finished a couple on the flight on the way here and I'm going to start off with Leo Tolstoy's Childhood Boyhood Youth, which insanely I started in January, it's now March, it's not even that long a book, I think it's like 350 pages or something, something fairly normal and I'm about halfway through it. That was for Emma and Carolyn Marie Reed's book club that they're doing, Dickens vs Tolstoy, and I really really want to watch their debate, I want to watch their reading vlogs for it, and so I can't wait to finish it. I'm also really enjoying it, I just haven't been in quite the right headspace for reading it because I've been so tired and run down and even though it's not a challenging read at all it is a rich read and I think I wanted to have the energy to bring to it to actually get out of the book something of what Tolstoy put into it. thinking twice and I knew it would catch up and that we would be the ones left behind the stories I've been told they never seem to leave my mind mm, and this road that I am on I gotta stay here for some Hello and good afternoon. It is Wednesday and I've just spent today editing a YouTube video, my February wrap-up video, which I really want to get out before the end of March. And I've kind of reached a point with it now where I need the internet in order to finish it. Um, and there's not any internet available anywhere right now. So I thought now would be a perfect time to sit down and give a quick update. Tom has gone diving today. Yesterday we both went diving. Something that I've been reflecting on that I wanted to share, just in case you needed to hear it, because I think I could do with hearing this more often. So yesterday I went diving. I've done diving before, but not very much. And I've always found it really cool. But what had always happened, but I always forgot afterwards had happened, and is that as the pressure changes, I get really excruciating pain in my ears. And I struggle to equalize, as it's called, to make the pain go away. And so yesterday I went on what's called a double dive. So we went in the boat, did a dive in one place and then moved like to another location to do a dive in another place. And the first dive that I did, like it was cool to be under the water, but I kind of spent a lot of the dive looking forward to coming back up to the surface where I'd feel safe again. Um, and then when it came to doing the second dive, I felt like sick and shaky and my ears still hurt. And I ended up just saying, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna stay on the boat. And I think that is so often for our generation in particular, this sort of mantra of like, you only regret the things that you don't do, you never regret the things that you do do. But I kind of wanted to challenge that a bit because it was absolutely the highlight of my day, just lying on this boat in the sunshine by myself. I'd taken nothing to do and so for about an hour all I had to do was to just sit and look at the scenery, lie down, doze a little bit, feel the sunshine on my skin. And it was honestly a much more enjoyable experience for me than the dive, which is stereotypically the cooler thing to be doing with your day. And so it's just reminded me that like, yeah, sure, it's worth giving things a try, but I find it very often beat myself up about not doing enough. And if you needed to hear it, 
sometimes turning things down is the right choice for you and you can have just as much fun doing something quieter, calmer, that makes you happy, even if that's not what you feel like you're supposed to be doing in order to be leading your best life, whatever that means. Anyway, that was kind of a bit of an aside from the reading, but just something that I was reflecting on. Today, like I said, I've had a chill day. I've been spending about an hour writing my diary in the mornings, which has just been absolutely heaven. It brings me so much joy. And then I've also been reading, of course. Today, I've actually been working on finishing Getting Things Done by David Allen, which is a really interesting reread for me. So this is obviously, as you can tell from the hideous cover, a self-help book about getting things done. And I first read this maybe about five years ago when I just felt completely and utterly overwhelmed by teaching. I felt like I had a million things to do, I couldn't do them. It was affecting my health and I think I saw this book recommended somewhere and I remember it just really resonated with me. On Goodreads I actually gave it five stars. And the basic concept is that in order to be able to be happy with what you're doing and not doing in life, you need to be aware of all of your different tasks that you feel like you should or ought to be doing and have them all listed down in a place that you check back in with regularly. That's pretty much the whole concept of the book. And on rereading it, I'm finding it so interesting because it's just so bad. Like, I think now that I've had a few more years of watching YouTube videos about productivity and that kind of thing, a lot of the ideas in here don't feel new or novel anymore, but mostly just the writing style is so unbelievably waffly that it's quite hard to work out most of the time what David Allen is actually getting at and what his main message actually is. I sort of thought this was going to be a, a kind of comfort read to go back to. Uh, I picked it up again, I think a combination of a couple of things. One, like I said, this month's been really stressful and I was therefore kind of craving that panacea feeling that you can get from reading self-help books sometimes where you're like, ah, oh, if I just follow the system, my life will be easy again. Also, I just find often around springtime this time of year that I get this urge to kind of clean and sort my life out and organize everything. So that's why I picked it up again. But I thought it was gonna be a really quick read, like a couple of hours. And it's actually taking me ages to get through it again. I think I probably will work my way through and finish it just out of interest and kind of out of nostalgia for how much I remember feeling like it helped me when I first read it. But I would now say definitely avoid it. Just watch one of those five minute YouTube summaries of the key points in it. You do not need all of David Allen's waffle. So that's what I've been mostly reading today. I quite want to move into Song of Raids and Ruin, which would mean starting a new book, which I'm kind of not supposed to be doing until I've wrapped up a few of my old ones. But I also just feel like I'm kind of missing an easy and fun book and a YA fantasy might fill that void because everything that I'm trying to wrap up is mostly a classic and even though I'm really enjoying them I kind of want to also have something a bit more easy to read on the go at the same time so I might start that. I finished two books over the weekend and so I can legitimately start one more and still be moving in the right direction towards my goal of getting my currently reading list of books down to a kind of sensible level. <laughs> staying in one of these really nice places that has like a bookshelf 
with a load of books that people have left that you can read. And I was really excited for it because I really fancy reading a proper book and you brought my Kindle with me. Um, but then, unfortunately, I've looked at the options available. I'll show you. Pretty much all in German or French or just not even vaguely the kind of book that I would be interested in reading. So that's a shame, but I still enjoy looking at the bookshelf every day. Good morning. We had a lovely day yesterday until we got home. I have no footage of this because I was definitely far too distressed. We got home and um, discovered that earlier on in the day when Tom tried to take a shower and the water wasn't working, he then had not actually turned the taps off, which is easy done because there was no water coming out. And while we were out, they had turned themselves back on and had totally flooded the room. All my like diaries and notebooks that I brought with me got soaked, unluckily, but luckily the one that was written in fountain pen that had my most actual like personal diary writing stuff in it was on top and has been like basically completely unaffected. And then the other two that got really soaked didn't actually have very much writing in them or the writing was in biro and so it hasn't, even though the, they like look ugly and water damaged, it hasn't affected the writing too much. So that was kind of like simultaneously lucky and unlucky. And then another simultaneously lucky and unlucky is that my laptop was on top of a pile of clothes and the clothes were absolutely sodden, like completely drenched. But my laptop miraculously, just the outer casing of it was like a bit damp, but it seems completely and utterly unaffected. It's fine, it wasn't wet in the inside at all, thank the Lord. Uh, but my laptop charger was completely and utterly soaked. Um, I just tried it this morning, it doesn't work at all. So we're gonna have to try and work out how to get a replacement for that, which will be a bit of a faff because we can't get one in Congo. Uh, we're probably more likely to get one here in Tanzania than we are in Congo. But um, yeah, that means that my laptop now obviously no longer works, which I'm quite disproportionately sad about. It's made me realize how addicted to my laptop I am because I'm suddenly just like, but everything I wanted to do involves my laptop and my whole life is on there. Um, so I'm so grateful that the laptop itself isn't actually damaged, but I think it's gonna be a bit of a hassle trying to get a replacement charger for it. So yeah, anyway, that was yesterday. Um, on the reading front yesterday, I started Song of Raids and Ruin by Rosanne Brown. Um, I'm not very far through it because, like I said, I had a pretty busy day yesterday, but I have started it and my initial impressions from the first few pages is just like so, so good. I'm so excited for this book. Um, it's just the writing style already completely gripped me. It's been a long time since I read a YA fantasy or even just fantasy novel of any time. It's not a genre that I have huge familiarity with, even though some of my favourite novels fall into the fantasy genre. Like I love the Windsinger trilogy, I love Philip Pullman's books. But it just like, it starts off with a storyteller calling everybody in to listen to the stories. Um, we have two characters, Malik and Karina. Um, Malik is a refugee and Karina is the princess of kind of like the the capital city of the land that this novel's set in. Um, 
both characters just seem super interesting already so like Malik suffers from these frequent crippling panic attacks and Karina suffers from frequent crippling migraines which um, was one of the reasons that I picked the novel up because obviously I also suffer from migraines and I thought that would be interesting to see represented in literature but yeah so far just like it seems really well written really beautiful but also really gripping loads of cliffhangers I think I've kind of needed this in my reading for a little while because I've been in not quite a reading slump like I've still been reading stuff but I've been really busy and I guess I haven't m forced time for reading within that busyness and I think one of the reasons for that is that even though I've been enjoying the stuff I've been reading there's been nothing to really draw me back into it because it's all been kind of classic literature which is beautifully written and which is nice to be in while you're in it but when you're out of it you're not really wondering what's happening next so that was really nice to start and I'm excited to read some more of that today because we're just gonna have a quiet day at the lodge today sorting out a load of admin stuff um on my phone <laughs> rather than on my laptop because I can't use it um and yeah hopefully I'll be able to get a bit more reading done today as well Hey, so today we basically spent the whole day trying to fix the issue we'd accidentally created by flooding my laptop charger. We have hopefully kind of finally sorted it. We've got an order from Dar that's being posted to our hotel that we're going to in Zanzibar, so I really, really hope that works because it was very expensive and a lot of hassle to organise. That was kind of what we ended up sorting for most of yesterday. We went through an, like about five different iterations of plans. I also did some reading yesterday. I just carried on reading A Song of Raids and Ruin by Rosanna Brown. I'm about a third of the way through and I'm really enjoying reading a story that has regular cliffhangers and a gripping fast-paced plot and all of those things also that's quite comparatively easy to read that doesn't really involve that much analysis um, although it's not simplistic or badly written at all so yeah I'm really enjoying it I think it's taking me a little while to get back into reading fantasy as in sometimes it just feels to me like the plot's really good and I'm connecting with the characters and then there's suddenly just some random crazy burst of magic and it. it kind of feels a bit like it comes out of nowhere. I don't know whether that's the writing style or whether I'm just not like completely deep down in the world yet but it's really interesting there's quite a contrast between the two main characters so the narrative switches each chapter between Malik the refugee and Karina the princess and both of them like very much have their own problems going on both in terms of physical and mental health and in terms of their family their histories like it's very dramatic and full of incidents and it's quite interesting to see the different ways that the personality types of the two characters have done that so Karina is incredibly angry she's the sort of person to have almost massive tantrums to scream to rip stuff apart uh, the kind of personality that really grates on mine and so I, although I think she's a, a wonderful character, I'm struggling to really kind of connect to her. Whereas Malik is a bit more quiet and subdued. I'm definitely really fond of him. The story's taking place at this massive event, it's called Solstasia. It's like a huge festival that happens only once every 50 years. It's this extremely significant kind of once in a lifetime event that the characters are all wrapped up in, in their own different ways. Uh, there's kind of like a variety of plot paths unfolding and you're not quite sure what's going to happen at any given point so yeah i'm looking forward to reading some more of that today today is a traveling day but it also feels like quite a nice bonus day at the lodge because we're not traveling until this afternoon so i think for this morning we're just maybe going to do a bit of reading need to pack um and that's pretty much it it's in a way quite nice not having my laptop because it means that 50% of the things that I would normally be doing have just been <laughs> taken away from me as an option so mostly just reading is left which is nice. Hey I'm just tidying up our room ready to go but I'd quickly show you what I put in my luggage for traveling really light because we're doing this holiday two weeks on just hand luggage and one of the things that I am quite good at is packing light. I can either pack really light or really heavy. I'm not very good at packing somewhere in between. I'll start off by showing you what toiletries I bring for a fortnight away. I don't actually use that many toiletries just in day-to-day -day life. I don't have a huge variety of makeup or anything, so it's not too tricky to bring stuff for going away with. Um, Jewellery-wise, I literally just brought the jewellery that I'm wearing, so I've got these earrings from Ana Luisa and this necklace which my brother got for me for Christmas from All Saints. I'm just wearing those if I'm wearing jewellery at all. I'm just wearing these. I didn't bring anything else to change into. They're quite a nice level of looking fairly fancy if you wear them for an evening but also not being so over the top that you can't wear them as your day-to-day jewellery. Then I have this tin which has shampoo, conditioner 
and missing soap. It's a really good, nice, like hard, solid, eco-friendly option. Um, and then in terms of liquids, I have face moisturizer, deodorant, sun cream, I have my foundation, I have just a makeup remover is the only form of kind of face wash I've got, so I just take my makeup off at night and then just wash my face with water in the morning. And then I have a little tube of toothpaste, Tom also has one. This is my perfume carrier, I really love it. You just twist it and have the tube on the inside filled up with perfume. I have an eyebrow pencil eyeliner, a lip screen that's got high sun factor protection in it and a mascara. That is all of the liquids that I've got and they all fit into this little pouch for being at the airport. In terms of clothes, um, a couple of things we have in the wash, but I have a long skirt, swimsuit, a long dress, a short dress, long sleeve top. I have that I'm wearing, another t-shirt, these leggings, which are really comfy for traveling, and also these trainers, which are really comfy for traveling. And then shoes-wise, I kind of um, went a bit luxury on shoes and brought these with me, just because I really, really wanted to have some shoes that I could actually dress up in and feel like really nice in while I was on holiday, instead of only having my trainers and these like plastic Birkenstock, which are my kind of trusty old beach sandals. So that's made the bag a bit of a squeeze, but I kind of think it was worth it. Then I just have this pouch, which has got one more short skirt in it and like underwear, face masks, that kind of thing. I have a pouch here, which has all of my important travel documents in. Those towels belong to the lodge that we're staying at. And then in terms of other stuff that goes in my bag, this is my electronics and just general other mishmash. Then this was my other main indulgence that I kind of regret maybe bringing so many, but I was really, really excited to spend time writing in all my different journals. I feel like I am the golden notebook lady, even though I haven't even read that book yet. Then I have, this is my other toiletries bag slash pencil case. Uh, I have never had a problem bringing a safety razor in my hand luggage ever, and I've traveled with one a lot. This is the little bag that doubles up as my wallet. I have my Kindle, my laptop, my laptop charger, and all of that goes into this Kankan bag. It's a squeeze, but it does all fit. Ta-da! My tips for traveling light are, number one, go somewhere hot. I think it's a lot, lot easier to do this when you go to a warm country because you really don't need very many clothes or particularly bulky shoes, and that's what takes up most of the space in your rucksack. Number two, wear your large items. Like, I have a sweater at the moment that's in the wash. I will tie that around my waist or wear it if it's cold enough. Um, I never go without at least one jumper and something to fully cover my legs <laughs> because I find I get so cold on the plane. And then number three, definitely just think what you can cope without. So for example, there's one item that I'm coping without but I really wanted to bring, which was my tripod, but it was just too big. I couldn't fit it into my hand luggage only and it was ridiculous to take a suitcase purely for the sake of a tripod, so I'm just getting around that. Hence a lot of handheld angles in this vlog. Um, but also be prepared to wash your clothes. So take a smaller amount of clothes and just accept that if you're going away for two weeks, three weeks, at some point halfway along, you're gonna have to pay some money for somebody to wash them, but that's not the end of the world. Those are my top tips, very basic, but I do think that traveling light is very achievable. The Kankan rucksack is actually a really, really good hand luggage rucksack. I have had mine for years. I do find it very useful for traveling because it's really boxy and so it's very easy to fit stuff in. I hope that was vaguely interesting or helpful. I know I'm super nosy and always intrigued to see what people take when they're packing, etc. For the rest of today, I think I'm just going to chill, read, maybe film. I have one more video that I would quite like to film if I hopefully have space on my phone because I can't offload any of my videos now that my laptop's dead. Um, but I would also like to film a video about reading children's literature as an adult. I need to plan that out a bit more. I have some vague ideas in my head, but I think I need to sketch map that out and then maybe if I have time, I'll also film that today. Uh, but also really crack on with reading A Song of Raids and Ruin, which I'm really enjoying. <laughs>
good evening. I'm going to round off this week's vlog here. My reading update is that I have finished Song of Raids and Ruin by Rosanne Brown. I really enjoyed it. It was such a fun book to read on holiday. I think that's one of the main words that I would use to describe it for me. It was just fun. It kind of really reminded me of how much the experience of reading can be complete escapism, to just immerse yourself in a fantasy world that you don't want to look up from the page from. The book was fast paced, the plot was engaging, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I read it a lot on flights, waiting around, and it was just a perfect companion for that. So I'm really looking forward to part two, it's a duology. And the second part is coming out later this year, in August, I believe. That will be really fun to read, and I think it will work really well as a duology. I feel like it's one of those books where if it had been made a trilogy, it might end up feeling like it dragged, but it actually ended in a really nice place, like, completely prepared for there to be another novel without this first novel feeling totally incomplete, like it was just half of the story. So, yeah, great debut author, and I'm looking forward to reading her next book. Okay, I'm going to round off there for this vlog. Thank you so very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Good night.